And what about Amy? So we're waiting for uh, Gary. I, I'm back. Had a little like connection glitch, but here I am. Okay, good. Thank you. Welcome everyone uh, back to our PM session. Uh, our YouTube is being live streamed. So we are now going to move to the next item on the agenda, item number 10. Item number 10 is for 83 Kalmar Avenue. Um, I do have a long list of speakers. I will do a roll call just to make sure everyone has signed in. So application 10 for 83 Kalmar Avenue. We have the agent with us, Patrick McAuliffe. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Uh, we have on our list, uh, Caroline Flair, the neighbor in opposition. I am here and um, also I'm representing three other uh, house owners and neighbors. I'm just hoping that will add a little bit to my time when I'm going through my presentation. Caroline, I'm afraid I will not be able to do that because uh, five minutes is the time that is uh, allocated to every speaker. So I'm afraid I will not be able to do that. Okay. Okay, well, I'm gonna try and uh, insert their comments into mine and we'll see what happens. Okay, that's great, thank you. Um, we have Gerald Holborn. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh. Okay. I'm here. All right, thank you. We, I'm just doing a roll call right now, so just stay with us, please. Catherine Russell. Through, through the chair, can you confirm with, um, I guess, some of, the, some of the next set of neighbors, um, are they are they here to observe or are they are they here? That's a good point. Okay. Thank you for identifying that. So Elizabeth, um, can we have you back for a moment? Uh, you've, you've registered to speak. Are you in support or in opposition? I'm in opposition. Okay, thank you. Uh, Catherine Russell has not signed in. Okay, Catherine, you are not uh, signed in. If you wish to speak, please connect. Um, Roger Chorney. Yes, I'm here. So, Roger, uh, could you please advise if you're here in support or in opposition? Uh, I'm here in opposition, and Kathy Russell is here beside me, so she will not be speaking. 
Okay, so Catherine is with you, but she will not be speaking. Okay. Okay, we have Penelope Griffin. Penelope Griffin, that's um, 77 Kalmar. No? Okay. So Penelope, we are, you're not signed in. If you are listening to us, uh, could you please connect? Solomon Chung. He's not there? Okay, so Solomon, if you wish to speak, please sign in. Um, Scott Taylor. Okay, thank you, Scott. Uh, again, are you in opposition or in support? Sorry, I'm in opposition. Okay, all right, thank you. Please stay with us. Mark Robinson. I'm here in opposition. Okay, thank you for confirming that. Uh, I had, um, I have Marjan Vertar. Yes, I'm here. Thank you, sir. Are you in opposition or? Um, in support opposition okay. opposition okay thank you so i will confirm our list of speakers we have gerald elizabeth taylor caroline flair roger shorney scott and mark and Marjan. Uh, for those who have not signed in and were registered to speak please uh, try to sign in if you wish to speak to this item so we will start with the uh, deliberation on item 10, 83 Kalmar Avenue. We have with us, um, this is an application to construct a new two-story detached dwelling, and we have before us seven variances. Patrick McAuliffe is the agent. Patrick, please go ahead. Um, would you like to make a presentation, or would you like to dive right into the questions from the committee? I think we need to dive into what everybody has to say. Okay, so you, you would... You would not do a presentation? No. Okay, thank you. All right. So members of the committee, questions for Patrick McAuliffe at this time? All right, I see none. There are no questions. Thank you, Patrick. Please stay with us. I will now move uh, to speak with the neighbors. So the first one on the list, Caroline Flair. Caroline? I'm here and thanks for allowing me to speak today. So you I'm have five minutes. You have five minutes okay. and your time starts now. Okay, I'm also uh, mm -hmm. representing Pamela Griffin that you were looking for at 77 Calmar, Peter Dickens at 88 Calmar, and Susan and Ian Plummer at 90 Calmar, all in opposition. Going down the list of the variances, there are seven. Um, which to us end up being a maximum, uh, you know, kind of uh, variance as opposed to minor. Um, going down to the, the list of on the variances on number three on the announcement of the meeting, which is the height, which is number 10.20.40.10. The proposed height is almost 20% higher to 8.6 meters on the main walls. And that's almost as high as the peak max at nine. So very much uh, a, a top of the zoning bylaws. And someone at 90 Calmar writes for me that combined with the flat roof box design of the structure will make this building an imposing addition to the landscape, totally out of character with existing homes on the street, which are all pitched homes. Um, towering over bungalows, one and a half and two story homes some of which were rebuilt and revitalized and are sympathetic to the current cottage styles, Tudor styles and modern pitched roofs that are you know, totally out of scale and, and will uh, wreck the character of the street. Also have concerns from 77 Kalmar who will be overlooked in her yard, shadowing her yard and also with a back balcony that will be overlooking and stopping her enjoyment. There is also a flooding concern on that, and I'll um, look at that a little later, but on to number four on the list, which was 10.2.40.10, the parapet wall. On the proposal, it looks like it's exactly the same height as the main walls, if looking at the proposed plan, um, and on the list that you gave us, 
at 8.6. My understanding of a parapet wall was that it was usually pretty higher up than the main wall so that you could hide things like stacks and skylights. There are seven skylights listed on the plans of this um, proposal, which is uh, seen on pages A5, A6, and A7 of the plan. So what's gonna be hiding the skylights? How big is this really big proposed box building going to be? It's already very close to the max of the peak of houses at nine meters. Um, people do not wanna look at that wall in their backyard, particularly 77, which is two doors south and beyond. Then we look at the length and depth, which is number five and six on the list, 10.20.40.20 and 30. Um, there is a huge propensity to flooding. I don't think the new owner probably knows, but 83 floods out every time there's major rain. And also when it snows, the water level in that yard gets to about a meter in depth, according to uh, Pamela Griffin at 77. So she is very concerned with the added length and depth that this yard has, lack of green space is gonna be, that her backyard, her house, and the houses behind will be flooded. Um, we did have a major disaster on the street in 2013 where the front sewer and drainage flooded and the whole street lost their basements. I think there was three homes that didn't. Okay, so we're very concerned about that. Um, then there's the front yard landscaping. One of my neighbors is gonna address that. Um, but another neighbor notes that there are only two catch basins and this 83 Calmar proposed lot and the houses across from it are right at the very depth of the street that goes down into the middle. And that's where all our flooding problems have happened. Um, Lastly, I wanna go back to the exception, which is RD 1462, 20% increase in the max floor, in the floor space has been added. I go back to the application of the owner's agent um, who when asked on the, you know, the application for these variances was asked why it is not possible to comply, comply and he said that the owner needs a bigger space. Um, and I have a written statement from from Peter Dickens at 88 Kelmar, who had a conversation, a casual conversation with the owner who saw him in the yard. And he was, he indicated he was the owner, but was just rebuilding for resale. So that was a big disappointment. Mega house, um, mega flooding problems, et cetera. Um, you know, wanting to know what the real reason for this, it sounds like the owner is going up back, forward, down, even sideways, which is not listed on here. 10 seconds left. To flip it for profit. Okay, it, it sets a dangerous precedent, doesn't fit the scale, doesn't fit the type of our street, doesn't fit the character, and it's not revitalizing it properly okay. in our neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Um, Brian, if you don't mind, can I have my screen back, please? Thank you. Members of the committee, you heard Caroline uh, uh, speak to her concerns. Is there any question for Caroline at this time? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Caroline, for your time. I will now move on to the next speaker, Gerald Holborn. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Gerald Holborn, and uh, I live at uh, 84 Calmar Avenue across the street from uh, the proposed new home. Thank you, um, I'm very concerned with the proposed variances to the bylaws that govern the permitted height, length, and overall size of this building. We've had several new houses and renovations with additions built on our street, and they fit in well up to now. However, that's not the case with this proposed design. It will be by far the largest house on our street and will dominate the other neighboring bungalows and smaller two-story homes. This proposal is requesting seven variances to the zoning in order to build a residence totally out of character of our street. In particular, uh, the uh, variance for the maximum permitted floor area is like 20% larger than the uh, zoning allows. I can understand requiring a minor variance if you're putting on an addition to an existing building, if the original doesn't comply, or if you were forced into it if necessary to integrate the new addition with the original, but this is not the case in this instance. The developer has a clean sheet here 
And there's no reason that the design of a new house cannot be within the existing regulations. Um, those are all my comments, but I'd like to read uh, also uh, something from my neighbor at 82A, uh, Jeff Wenner. And he says that uh, he's objecting to the variance request. He's concerned about oversized house that uses up too much of the lot and can overtax the water and sewage systems. The age of this neighborhood has created a situation where the housing is already denser than the infrastructure was designed to accommodate. And he's also concerned about the minimization of green space on and around the lots. Thank you, those are all my comments. Thank you, Gerald, for your time. Members of the committee, any questions for Gerald? I see none, thank you. Uh, we now move on to our next neighbor, Elizabeth Taylor. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, please. thank you for having me on. Go ahead, please, you um, have five minutes. So, okay, um, the proposed size of 83 Calmar, I don't feel fits the current modest appearance of Calmar Avenue. The seven variances in this application uh, are mostly egregious with the exception of perhaps variance one, which is um, not unreasonable. The size of this proposed building is clearly for monetary profit of the current owner and builder, builder as it is strongly believed, as Carolyn mentioned, that the current owner will not be residing within the neighborhood, that their decisions will impact. The proposed footprint of the building exceeds the allowable permitted green space. It's very important to ensure our, our green space is kept to a maximum for appropriate rain drainage, preventing further flooding among neighboring homes, and to reduce the strain on the city water, water management system. Um, as already mentioned uh, by the two other um, opposition speakers, Calmar has had a history of extreme flooding in the, uh, in the past, as mentioned in 2013, following rain downpours. And it impacted 83 Calmar in particular to the extent that the late Mayor Ford made a personal visit to witness this, the destruction from this rainfall. For better or for worse, during the COVID pandemic, uh, it has been keeping people home more than usual. It's also allowed our neighbors to explore and enjoy their front and backyards as extensions of their living spaces. Of particular importance, this allows added benefits to nature and our exposure to nature, uh, to outdoor spaces, and what they have on our mental, emotional, physical, and to some extent, our social well-being. The length and height of the proposed building will dramatically cut down on these elements of neighboring lots and the well-being of those who live within them. And um, I would also note that there are quite a lo large number of families within on the street as well. Many of the homes on Calmar are bungalows and are modest two-story builds. The proposed building of 83 Calmar with the seven requested variances is a bold attempt at maximizing the footprint for profit with little to no consideration of privacy concerns of its neighbors and ensuring current green space and sun exposure is maintained as well as environmental impact is minimized. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. That was helpful. Uh, members of the committee, any questions for Elizabeth? I see none. Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth, for taking the time to speak with us. I will now go to our next uh, um, neighbor, Roger. And Roger is with us. Roger, please go ahead. You have five minutes. Uh, yes, uh, I live across the street. I live at 86, directly across from 83. Uh, we will lose our privacy. And, um, yeah, so with regards to uh, the, the infrastructure, it will be a problem with the uh, with the overflow, we sit, we are situated right in the middle of the block. So we get water coming from the north and from the south, and it collects right in front of our house. So it will collect right in front of their house. So I think that will be a problem down the road. Um, also, there will be uh, an issue with parking. Larger residential structures will be a result in, in more occupants and persons visiting and less parking availability. There's not really too much more I can add because I agree with everything else everybody else said. So uh, that's it for me, thanks. Okay, great, thank you. Any question for Roger, member of the committee? Okay, I see none, thank you. Next, uh, I'll check again. Has Penelope uh, Griffin signed in, Ali? Okay, no. Solomon Chung? No, so Penelope and Solomon, if you're listening in, um, your last chance to sign in. 
um, because we do have a few minutes on this application. So if you get a moment, please sign in if you wish to speak. Scott Taylor. Scott, you're uh, with us. Hi. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks. Hope, hope you can hear me okay. Uh, yes, my name is Scott Taylor. Uh, I live at 65 Palmar Avenue. Um, and I, yes, I'm speaking in opposition to the seven uh, requested variances, um, which by my calculation seem to be quite an extension beyond the proposed bylaws, um, uh, particularly maximum floor area um, uh, by 20% beyond from 204 meters squared to 245.7 meters squared. Seems complete un completely unnecessary um, at all. Um, I think the height of the building com will completely um, uh, stick out from all of the other houses on the street. We don't have any flat roof houses on our street. All of the other houses that have been built, the rebuilds, the top ups, all of those have um, sort of adhered to a similar style um, and type of build with a um, slanted roof or a peaked roof in the middle. And um, that is really the character of the street. Um, I think uh, everyone has already mentioned the impacts on privacy, uh, the impact on how it affects the, uh, you know, the length of the building into the backyard, and it's going to affect those direct neighbors. Uh, neighbors. Um, I think everyone has mentioned already how it's going to impact the, uh, the water flow and the drainage and how every year the, sun, the spring thaw, uh, the backyards fill up towards that end of the street because it's in a low point on the street. It's a, there's a gentle uh, slope to our street, which then, which meets in the middle exactly where 83 is. Um, and looking at the plans, I see, uh, you know, not a very well thought out idea to have a staircase in the backyard where all that water is going to pool. Um, and so that's right off the bat, a red flag for anyone who's going to live there. And I think that any one building this house should keep in mind what that's going to be like for the people living there. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention was simply the fact that um, that the landscaping or the reduction of uh, landscaping space or, or soft ground space is going to be reduced to 66%, um, which is going to dramatically impact um, just the ability to grow trees and to grow uh, plants and flowers and all of those other things that are important for the, the natural environment of the community and for the well-being of, uh, you know, our city. So uh, that's all I wanted to add today. Thank you. Thank you uh, for your time. Um, any questions for, for Scott? I see none. Thank you. Uh, moving on to our next uh, speaker, Mark Robinson. Mark. Please go ahead, Mark, Hello. you have five uh, minutes. My name is Mark Robinson. I'm a homeowner, homeowner at 76 Calmar. And uh, I'm on opposition to all seven of these items. However, there's a few that I'd like to, to address particularly that, that impact me. And first of all, it's number three. It's the, the maximum height of the building is going up 20%. and which is four and a half feet over the bylaw max. And that's, that's a half a story. Uh, the ver this variance to me is major as many of the neighboring houses are bungalows or one and a half story homes. This will home, this one will stick out like a sore thumb and destroy the, the historical architecture of the neighborhood. A dwelling under current construction to my backyard um, was stopped due to it being over a meter too high. But even without going over height at nine meters, sticks out like a sore thumb amongst all the bungalows and one and a half stories on Manderley Drive. Um, that's number. That's my first one. Number seven is the uh, the minimum of seventy five percent required front yard landscaping, which they've reduced to sixty six, eleven percent less, which. Um, with no account to the side and backyard. This will affect drainage in all seasons as, as the water has less area to drain to overtaxing our sewers, which are at their limit already as, as 
we had a flood in 2013. Many basements were flooded in a major rainstorm. In fact, ironically, Mayor Rob Ford came to the very property 83 of the prior owner to inspect the damage. If this goes through, it will exasperate, exacerbate future problems of flooding, a major variance issue not to be ignored. And the other issues are other people will address or already have addressed them. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Mark. Any questions for Mark, committee members? Okay, I see none. Thank you. And we have Marjan with us. Marjan. Hi, yes. My name is Marjan Rotar. I'm uh, living at 70 Calmar Avenue. Uh, I've been at this address. My family's been in this address since 1965. Um, I just, everyone's basically covered. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, the, the points that I was going to make, uh, so I would just say that I'm supporting all my neighbors uh, in opposition. Uh, I believe, you know, these uh, proposed variance changes uh, would, would really not add to the community uh, uh, whatsoever. And, and I just hope that uh, you will consider that. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Marianne. Uh, my apologies, I mispronounced your name. So members of the committee, any questions for the speaker? I see none. All right. Thank you. Uh, all the speakers, um, your comments have been uh, noted. I will now move to uh, the agent on this application, Patrick McAuliffe. So, Patrick, um, are you with us? Yes, I am. Perfect. So, Patrick, you heard the concerns of the residents. Um, how would you like to address them? Okay, I'll go through point by point and suggest changes to each point. Okay. Okay. So point number one, I would like to eliminate completely. You would like to eliminate variance number point one. one. Okay. So just to give you a heads up, uh, Patrick, we typically do not uh, entertain revisions on the floor because um, I think it becomes complex and complicated for the listeners to understand. But again, uh, we will leave it to the committee's decision if they wish to yeah. uh, entertain those changes or not today. But I'm happy to listen to what the changes you're recommending. Okay. So, so point number one, I'd like to eliminate completely. Okay. Point number two, I'd like to point out that it that uh, the living space index is only point six one eight and most of the city has, has 0.6. So although it's larger than what is normally allowed in that neighborhood, it's certainly in, within keeping of what is quite common throughout the city. Point number three and point number four, I'd like to reduce that to 8.3 instead of 8.6. Okay. Point number uh, five, which is the length of the house, I'd like to keep that the way it is. Mm -hmm. Point number six is is an issue because I want to keep a parking space in front of the garage that's on their property, as opposed to most houses in that neighborhood where the parking space is half on city property and half on their own property. So that's why this house is further back on the property in order to keep a parking space on their property in front of the garage. So that relates to or that pertains to variance number six? Yes. Okay. And that's why it is more than 19 meters. That is 21.33, in order to keep that parking space in front of the garage. Okay. So member M has a question. Go ahead, member M. You're muted, member M. Thank you, Madam Chair. So with variance number seven, like I understand you're trying to keep a, a driveway there, and six meters is the requirement for that parking space, um, would you be agreeable to possibly putting that driveway as a condition to use permeable pavers? Because that in a way will allow some kind of percolation of water uh, to help with, you know, the fact that you're not having soft landscaping there that would otherwise help absorb that um, water? This is related, okay, you, what you're asking is related to number seven. Number seven is the way it is only because there's a right of way and, and they would not accept grass in the right of way as grass on your property. Well, yes, because it has to be on your property. 
the right of way is owned by the city, so that makes complete sense to no, me. No, 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 it's a right of way between the two houses. Can, can okay, Brian, so that, can you plug that's up the plan? only reason number seven is there. Okay, we're pulling up the plan to better understand this. So you're saying that that soft landscaping is going to exist there, but it's not going to count? Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is that if it wasn't for the right of way, there wouldn't be a number seven. So my question is, the soft landscaping that Brian's highlighting, does yep. that contribute to your requirement of soft landscaping or is it not counting? The, the city would not include that in my in the area of my front yard. So therefore, the calculations got out of whack. I see. But in so reality, you're saying that you would you're saying that you would comply if that area was part of that calculation. Yes. Okay. But that being said, I mean, would you be agreeable to using permeable pavers on the driveway? I, I would. I would, uh, but I don't see what, what would be gained from it, but I would. It would be gained from the fact that you could allow water to drain through the driveway. Yeah. That you wouldn't There's no issue with drainage of the driveway because it slopes properly. Understood. I'm just trying to propose mitigation measures for some of the concerns and that I've heard today. Yep, I'm willing to accept that. Okay. So that was my, my question. So um, now you were talking about the building length. The building right. length does substantially, you know, looking at your site plan, jot out uh, beyond what um, the, the dwellings that flank the property. And my question relates to, and I'm looking at the elevations on both the north and south side. Can you confirm if the windows, there's like one specifically on the, the uh, south elevation, like there's some pretty large windows there. I mean, would that look directly into your neighbor's backyard? Do the, like, I'm, I'm trying to understand their concerns with privacy. So your building will jut out further than, than their house is currently. And are you proposing this large window to look directly into their backyard? Okay. Uh, and if that is an issue, I'm required, I, I'm willing to remove item number six completely, which would now mean that that is not an issue either. You so mean, that would bring the house forward. Right. I think that that would really, um, so you're saying not to require a, a, a variance to the building depth. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, would that affect your, sorry, go ahead, Amy. Because like all these variances that you're proposing, it's going to affect like all of your calculations. So we need as the committee to clearly understand what you're proposing here and how those numbers are going to change because we need to ensure that everybody on this call, both the committee members as well as the, the people that have taken the time out of the day to, to come and attend this hearing, understand what the new proposal is going to be. Could I ask for a deferral? Okay. All right, uh, Brian, can we have the screen back, please? Thank you. All right. Um, I do echo um, Member M's comments here because those changes um, are certainly affecting the other variances. The one that struck right to me was the front yard landscaping. That, to me, is going to be affected. Um, your lot coverage um, or your maximum permitted floor area, uh, well, I guess not that one, but certainly the front yard would be. But I do agree. Um, I think because of the substantial changes to the application on the floor, um, I feel it would be unfair to all the speakers and, and the listeners to be able to digest everything and, and to be able to uh, evaluate the application today. So if you're okay, so you, you suggest that um, you're okay with the deferral then, Mr. McAuliffe? Yes, I am. Okay. So members of the committee, uh, Mr. McAuliffe would like to defer the application. Um, I have two committee members uh, raising hands, so Member McCauley, please go ahead. Sorry? I'd like to ask for a it's, deferral. Yes. Um, I agree with the deferral. I will point out that in the deferral, the applicant should also consider the uh, uh, staff report that is saying that he build in accordance with the drawings uh, as submitted. So he needs to look at those drawings and resubmit them also to the staff. 
otherwise they will be asking for uh, approval of the drawing as submitted. Correct. I think a deferral would be a good idea here. Uh, let him take a look at a number of these items and see how he can make modifications. Okay, thank you. Member Said, you had a comment? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, uh, I totally agree that the deferral is uh, one of the good option. And while Mr. Patrick is doing that, uh, one of the concerning issue, one of the concern raised by the neighbor was the privacy issue. I appreciate Patrick, you suggested that you are willing to uh, modify the uh, height of the building, but I think the uh, still, uh, if you can consider um, some more changes in that, uh, moving from seven point. Uh, from 8.6 to 8.3, if you can or you consider that further moving it down, that would be that would be helpful. Because I hear the neighbors, uh, mostly the concern was the privacy issue because of height of the building. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Member Said. Any other comments? Oh, did we lose Member McKay? Yeah. Uh, Gary, can you hear us? Okay. We'll, we'll have to give a, we'll have to, yeah. We have quorum, we can proceed. Okay. Um, so we still have quorum, although Gary, it appears as, as having some technical difficulty, but we still have quorum. Uh, so uh, turning back to Patrick, so you heard the committee. The committee um, is uh, leaning towards a deferral uh, recommendation. So if that's okay with you, uh, let's take the matter into committee. So members of the committee, they have a motion, please. Member M. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move a motion for deferral. Signed, I, please. Thank you. May I have a seconder? Member McCauley. Please go ahead. I will second that motion. All in favor of this motion? The motion is carried and the application is deferred, signed die. Thank you. And thank you everyone for uh, attending the meeting today. Colin. Through through the chair, just, just for clarification, it's deferral, signy die to allow, to allow um, the applicant to um, confirm all required variances and make necessary revisions. Something to that effect. Something to that effect. Okay. Committee members, does that does that capture your comments? Yes. Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we have dealt with item ten. We now move to the next item, which was held, and that is item fourteen. And we have lost Gary. We'll continue. Okay. So item 14, uh, 169 Tower Drive. Uh, we have the owner, Jay and Papia Das Gupta. Are you with us, Jay and Papia? Hi, this is Papia. Hi. All right, thank you, Papia. Just stay with me for a moment. Um, the neighbor who has registered to speak in opposition, Carlos and Grace. Are you with us, Carlos? Yes, yes. we are. Okay, perfect. Thank you. They can't hear us. Yeah. Okay, so I was just doing a roll call for now, just to make sure you were there. Please wait, we will come to you in a moment. So um, committee members, this is application item 14, 169 tower. It's a minor variance application for a second story addition or the existing dwelling, a new garage and a rear deck. And you have before you uh, three variances for this proposal. Now, uh, Jay and Papia, would you like to make a presentation to the committee or would you like us to proceed with questions? I would just like to, I don't have a presentation, but I would just like to make some comments. Please go ahead. You have five minutes. Thank you. So thank you for allowing me the time to explain our positions. So before I get into, uh, to discuss about the relief we are seeking for the minor variances, I would just like to quickly touch base on the reasons for why we are proposing these changes. 
And uh, the major reason for this proposed change is to support the need for my 76 year old mother who lives with us. And I have already submitted a supporting document uh, to you uh, due to regarding her mental health uh, condition. And I'm sure you had an opportunity to look at that. Mm -hmm. So she had severe mm -hmm. mental conditions and on numerous occasions she was hospitalized. And the doctors have advised to keep her above the ground level with lots of sunshine and to stay with the family members. But given my family condition, the size, unfortunately, she is staying in the basement right now because I cannot accommodate her on the main floor. Both myself and my husband, we work from home and we both need private office spaces. And we have a very close family bonding with my grandson, my daughter and the entire family. They come and stay with us on a regular basis. And it is also recommended by the doctors for my mom to stay with the family. And given the present situation and the size of the house, it is impossible to do so. And uh, we also need a garage to do so. Um, to build this house uh, because we are getting old, both myself and my husband, and we both have physical conditions to clean the cars because we don't have a garage. Every time we need to clean the driveway, we have to first clean the car, move the car from the driveway, and then clean the driveway. So it's a lot of work. We are getting old. And so we would like to enjoy our retirement life in this house. Um, in our own house. Now coming to the relief for this minor variances. So I'm coming to number one, the permitted maximum lot coverage is 33% of the lot area and our proposed lot coverage is 36.01% of the lot area. So we exceeded the coverage because of we are adding the needed garage. And coming to number two, the required minimum frontier setback is 6.65 meter, and our proposed frontier setback is 6.52 meter. So the garage is encroaching the required front setback because the garage cannot be pushed back and cannot be made smaller because then it won't be called the garage anymore. And coming to number three, the required minimum west side year setback is 1.2 meter for the second story portion of the building only the proposed website year setback is 0.92 meter for the second story portion of the building. And if we push back the second floor addition to meet the 1.2 meter setback requirement, then it won't make a good use of the additional space and that room won't be um, called a decent bedroom. So these are um, our responses to the minor variances and we are seeking these minor variances from the committee. Okay, thank you very much um, uh, for, for that information. Uh, at this point, uh, committee members, any questions for Papia? Member Said, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much. Uh, uh, just a question from the owner. Um, I see there are certain condition of urban forestry there. So could you please tell us how many trees are going to be affected by this removed or under? There won't be anything removed. It's going to be as it is. So there is no tree in the property? No, there are trees. Sorry, I misunderstood. There are trees, okay. one at the front, which is the um, city tree. And I think there is two more at the back, but we are not touching or not doing anything. We had uh, like a urban forestry visit to our house and they told us what we need to do during the construction. So we are going to maintain that. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. Any other question for Papia? Okay, see none. All right. Um, so while we're on this item and Member Said raised it, so Papia, you're aware of the conditions of urban forestry and you have no issues with them, correct? No issues, yeah. I'm okay, aware. all right. I will now move to uh, speaking with the neighbor. And we have Carlos and Grace Proano. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. You have five minutes. Please go ahead right. and, and tell us what your concerns are. Your concerns are. Yes, uh, we, are con we, we have some concerns about this uh, huge construction project. My name is Carlos Proano, my wife, Grace Proano. We have lived at this address for the last 25 years. We have never seen a, a huge construction project 
uh, in, uh, just right beside us. Uh, 25 years ago, I asked my neighbor at that time, uh, Mr. Walter Sheen, uh, if we could uh, put something on the, on, on, the, on the driveways for the cars. And uh, he told me, no, Carlos, we can't because we share driveways. The driveway, we share driveways and uh, the houses are too close to each other. We have main, um, uh, main uh, entrance, uh, main side entrance, and uh, uh, for uh, for safety, for fire safety, we are not allowed to put anything in between the two houses. I am a, I am a person that when uh, when it comes to a safety, I I take very very seriously. My neighbor came last year to talk about this garage. She did not mention any second floor. She did not mention any extension of the garage over the front of the house. So. Uh, I called the uh, city construction engineering office and uh, I explained my neighbor's proposal. They were able to see the houses and they told me, no, there's no space for them to build a garage unless they take the front stairs out and move back the bedroom that they have with this uh, right now. They did not tell me they can extend the garage over the front of the house. That will affect to us actually my, what my neighbor is trying to do is move the, uh, the build this garage on the driveway and uh, build the second floor above it and extend it over the front of the house going toward the street. We will be more affected uh, by, 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 by this construction because the, uh, the, uh, uh, we will, this building will be too close to the property line and uh, we will have obstructed sunlight, we will have obstructed uh, views from, uh, from, uh, from our main entrance. I have the direct sunlight in, in the summer. My entrance, my main entrance is facing east and all, I get all the sun from there. When this building is gonna be built, I will have obstructed sunlight. Now, I, I would like to say that uh, we, we disagree with these uh, minors uh, uh, that my neighbor is proposing because they are all over, over the uh, limit of what the, what the, what the city okay. requires. We have by laws and we should go by, by, by yeah, laws. Can I ask uh, you, sir, can I ask you a question? So yes. if, if, if you can sort of focus on the three variances that are before the committee. So variance number one is the lot coverage. Variance number yes, two is, variance number two is a front yard setback. And the third one is a side yard setback. Do you have any particular concern with any of those three variances? Um, I understand you have other well, concerns, other issues, but I'm, I would like you to focus on the three variances that are before you. Yes, yes. Uh, the, uh, the, the front yard set, setback is, is, is my main concern because the garage is going to be built on the, on, the, on, the, on the driveway in which we have a shared driveway and it's, it's, it's set forward going toward the street. Okay. We, we will have obstructed views for that. We don't know how high... Uh, it doesn't mention in the in the in the in the layout. We don't know how high the second floor is going to be because it, we we don't we, we don't know. Uh, the west side yard is too close to the property line. It's not what the city requires. Are so, you you're we, on the west side, right? Yes, yes I, I yes I am on on the on, on the west side. My my main entrance is facing east. Okay. So I am I am I am facing to them. Okay. So. Uh, you, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, so uh, my question is: Is this building for residential, or is this building for business purposes? Okay. My so, other question is: mm -hmm. my family in a, in a, would, would my family be in danger if one day there's a fire and we we don't know what to do, or run around too close to each other? Uh, will my property be valued because the the uh, this, uh, this garage is going to be extended to the front. Uh, that, uh, uh, we will have a, a drastic uh, uh, change in the overall uh, appearance of our neighborhood. All the houses, about five or six houses are in the same layout. No one is sticking out over the front. And this garage uh, plus the second floor is going to be just too huge for us. Okay, all and right, thank you. I see neighbors, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so I, I, I would like to say as my life, as my last comment, if I, if I, if I have time. Sure. Uh, uh, 30 seconds, please. This, yeah, this is, this is one of the best neighborhood, uh, neighborhoods. 
people move in, they, they never move out easily. Uh, it's a nice place to live, a nice uh, place to have a family. Uh, we should respect the neighbors and we should respect the environment because we destroy it with, without knowing and after we face the consequence. My neighbor last year, she cut all the trees from the fence line. Okay. All the way to the schoolyard. I, I will have to cut you. I will have to cut you yeah. off because your time is done and also because that's okay. not Thank a part. Thank you very much for yeah. your attention. No, I appreciate your time. But I will certainly request uh, the uh, owner, Papia, to uh, address your concerns. But before you go, um, Brian, can I have the screen back, please? Thank you. Before you go, members of the committee, any questions for or comments for um, the neighbor, Carlos? Okay, I have two. We'll start with member Said. Go ahead, member Said. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Carlos, just for sake of clarification, I'm just looking at the street view. Uh, tell me, like, uh, your uh, driveway is towards east, am I right? Yeah, she's, yeah my, my, my neighbor house is, is, is going toward east. So I, your, uh, your entry, uh, your driveway is on east, while this garage is built. Uh, so you are, you are saying you are sharing the driveway. Uh, I don't yeah, we have shared driveways. Yes, we, we, we have shared driveways. Is this a shared driveway or is this is the independent driveway? I, I, I cannot see. Uh, yes, my, uh, my house is where the where the a sign at 167 poses, okay. and my neighbor's house is on the other side. Okay, okay, thank where you. The, where the, where the, where the yeah, Mr. Said, yeah. I think Mr. Said. It's, it, it appears like it's shared, it but they have their, like their own driveway. They're just adjacent to each other. It's not it's just adjacent shared. to each other. Mm -hmm. Someone has their YouTube stream on or something because I'm getting a lot of echo. Member M, can you repeat I your comment? I just wanted to clarify that, uh, like, I was confused too, Member Saeed. I was confused too, and so I went to Street View as well. And it, it's not actually a shared driveway. It just is two separate driveways that are adjacent to each other that they've just, um, it appears to be one, but there are two separate adjacent to each other. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Can we have the members back on the screen? Okay. And I think member McCauley also had a question and we have member McKay back. Member McCauley, please uh, go ahead with your question. I think my <clears throat> uh, members, my question has been partially answered by both Amy and uh, Mohammed. Um, when I look at the survey that is uh, shown on us, that it is clear we have two driveways here and that the garage that is being proposed is set back from the property line on his own property. So it, it's, it's not an issue of shared driveways or two driveways. They, they are two individual driveways with the appropriate setbacks. Okay, thank you for that clarification. And again, I would like to repeat that we're all only looking at the variances that are before us. There are no variances related to the garage setback or, or proximity to the neighbor. Um, we are only dealing with the three variances that are before us. Now, uh, thank you, Carlos, for your time. I will now go back to Papia. Papia, are you with us? Please go ahead, oh, Papia. No, I have a question for her. <laughs> I have a question for her. For? Sure. Sure, go ahead. For Papia. Okay, so Papia, um, we have a question for you, uh, and after that I would let you speak to the concerns that were raised by Carlos. But Member M, go ahead. Okay, so when I was looking at the drawings, I didn't really understand, because the front yard setback, I mean, it appears that the garage is going to be lined up with the existing front wall of the dwelling. Um, I'm just... Can you just help me just determine the drawing a little bit more clearly? Yes, so right now, uh, as you can see, we have the en entrance to our house from the side uh, with stairs. So yeah. we are going to take off those stairs. Um, we are going to uh, push back the garage. Um, so the front won't be, like the entry won't be from the side anymore. It will be on the uh, front. 
So no, my question relates mm -hmm. to the fact that your front yard setback doesn't even like does it what does it have to do with the garage really? Because it like if I look at the front yard setback, it's taken from your main wall, which would be that four point I can't read that nine six regardless, no? Like I'm I'm just trying to understand here. So is the variance because there's an addition above it? Because uh, I'm just trying okay. to understand how it impacts yeah. the street. Because yeah. it basically is going to be, if, if I've interpreted your drawings correctly, you're just replacing an open driveway and a set of stairs with a proposed garage that's actually yeah. already in line with your house. And it's yes. not actually sticking out beyond. So I'm just trying no. to visualize. No, what no, no. Yeah. Okay. no, it's not going to extra, no. You are absolutely right. Okay. I understand now. Thank you. I just needed some clarification. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, uh, Papia, um, you heard mm -hmm. your neighbor's concerns about the driveway and garage and, and, and a lot of things. So, uh, could you respond to his concerns, please? Sure. So thank you for bringing forward those concerns, although those are not really related to the variances, uh, to be honest, but uh, I'll respond to his concerns. With respect to his concern about the fire hazard, while we appreciate the concern, but um, I just want to address this, that these drawings that we have produced to the city are done by the professional architects handling our project. So, and he has taken care of all the building codes, uh, the safety and fire hazard and whatnot, uh, and incorporated in his drawing. And I'm sure um, that there could, cannot be imposed any fire hazard to his property or any other neighbor's property. Uh, and furthermore, I would like to add that there's numerous properties in and around this tower drive and our property that is being built or already built uh, with proposed change, and it is going with a major transformation with the entire neighborhood of ours. Regarding his obstructed views, um, so once again, I have to say the architect that is working on our project has looked into everything and incorporated in his design, so I cannot agree with his concern with obstruction views. Um, once again, I have to refer to so many properties that is being actually on proper uh, tower drive, um, very similar to what we are proposing. And um, about the drastic change uh, that he mentioned, uh, I would like to mention, yes, I agree with him, but this change is not going to be a negative change. This is going to be a positive change. And I, find, I further argue that this will raise the entire neighborhood property values as well. So many properties in and around our neighborhood is going through a uh, gentrification process, which results in homes going through bungalows to two-story homes in the uh, last five years. And I believe that our project is just a part of this positive change. And I believe it is my right as a citizen to be able to do so. And I have reasonable users of my land and which will contribute to the betterment of the community and the entire neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much for those responses. Members of the committee, any comment or question at this time? Member McCauley. Madam Chair, um, taking a look at the drawing, I just want to clarify that they need a front yard setback uh, variant because of the setback to the new porch on the front yard. I think when we were looking at the plans, the um, staff member was trying to draw our attention to the porch. It's not to the garage, it's to the porch on the front yard that has a setback of 4.96 meters. That's my only comment at this time. Okay, thank you, Member McCauley. Um, I would just like to reiterate that this has gone through a zoning review process. And if what we have before us is what we have, um, I'm unable to comment or confirm or anything at this time. Uh, whatever decision the committee makes would be on this variance itself that is before you. And again, I'm going to say we can't interpret plans. We can't interpret zoning regulations. This has been this has gone through zoning review. So I'm going to leave it at that. OK, so what is before us is what is before us. We need to delve into that. 
Any further comment or clarification? Okay, uh, Papia, thank you for your time. We are going to take the matter into committee. Any closing remarks before we take the matter into committee? No, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. All right, members of the committee, we take the matter into committee now. Any comment or are we prepared for a motion? Member M. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment, you know, and I appreciate that change is really hard for people, um, but we have to look at whether, you know, what is being proposed um, is a good use of the space and if there are true undue uh, impacts surrounding it. And in my opinion, I feel that this new addition facilitates multi-generational multi living arrangements that are super important in this day and age um, and doesn't have a, a, a large impact to the overall streetscape. I mean, the, they are providing a 0.9 meter setback to the property line where it's adjacent to a driveway. You know, it's not even majorly abutting like a, a house. So there is a large separation between this new addition and the neighbor on the other side. Um, I understand the the re request of needing more space to facilitate this this living arrangement, and I I, I truly feel that this these three variances are are minor in nature. Okay, thank you for those comments. Any other comment? Okay, I see none. All right, so are we ready for a motion? Uh, with that, I'm prepared to put forward a motion, Madam Chair. Please go I ahead. recommend approval. Oh, sorry, Anne, did you want to jump in? I'm just going to listen to Amy and then I'll jump in. Okay. Oh, no, well, go ahead then. I mean, I don't need to put a motion in now. Go ahead, Amy. I was going to second your motion. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very eager beaver, I suppose. Okay, um, I'm putting forward a motion of approval uh, subject to the urban forestry conditions um, for variance number 14 associated with 169 Tower Drive. Um, thank you. All right, seconder, member McCauley, go ahead, please. I will second that motion. Thank you, all in favor of this motion. The motion is carried. The application has been approved subject to conditions of urban forestry. Thank you everyone for your time today. All right, we now move to our next item that was held this morning and that is item 16. Item 16 is 54 Pharmacy Avenue. The application is to construct a new two story rear addition. And there was a previous CFA application that approved a variance for building length What's before the committee today are four variances. And I will do a roll call to make sure everyone is here with us. So Patrick McAuliffe, you're the agent. I'm here. Thank you. Um, Paul Metcalf, you're with us, Paul? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Elizabeth Diane Smilly, are you with us? Yes, it's Elizabeth Diane Smiley. I'm so sorry about that. It's Elizabeth Diane Smiley. Um, and we have Patricia and Sally Chang. Yes, we're both here. I'm here. Thank you. Uh, then we have Jenny Chen. Yes, I'm here. Perfect, thank you. So please um, bear with us. Uh, we will go through the, um, the process and we I will connect with you in a moment. So, Patrick, would you like to say and would you like to uh, speak to your application or have a presentation, or would you like to dive into the questions? Yeah, no, I'll I'll make a presentation. All right, please go so ahead, this, sir. This um, this project was before the committee back in March of 2020. What was approved was almost exactly what you see now. What the owner realized after it got approved was he would like to have had it the one-story section four feet longer. That's what this is all about, the one, the one story section that's four feet longer. As a result of that, uh, item number one, uh, where you're allowed to have 50% uh, coverage, the change to 50.50, just slightly over. Item number two, the length of the house was increased by 1.21 meters. Item number three, that the depth of the house was increased by 1.21 meters from what was originally approved. And item number four, uh, the 
deck that we have on the back is in line with the existing house, and we will put up a privacy fence between the deck and the neighboring property. That's all I really have to say. Okay, thank you. Members of the committee, any questions for Patrick at this time? Okay, I see none. Thank you. Um, I will now move to uh, speaking with the neighbors at this time. So the first one on the list, Paul McCaff. Paul, are you with us? Uh, hi, yes, I am here. And I, um, uh, although we, I think we all agreed to um, um, object, object to this uh, application, but uh, I think for the sake of redundancy, um, I'd like to uh, pass my time first to uh, either Patricia or Jenny as they're the adjacent houses. And then if I can add something after that, that would be great. Okay, sure. Um, so you meant you indicated Patricia and Sally. So Patricia and Sally or Jen, Patricia and Sally, are you there? Okay, Patricia and Sally, you're online. Can you hear us? Okay, so um, <clears throat> Madam Chair, my, my mother's English is not very good and she's wondering if um, the neighbor Jenny, who knows some Chinese Mandarin, could be her translator. Would that be possible at this time? Yes, of course, that, that is possible at this time. So um, please go ahead. You have five minutes. Okay. Do you want me to speak first, Mom? Yeah. Okay. So um, my name is Patricia, and um, I live at 56 Pharmacy. I'm the neighbor right beside them. Uh, 54 who is doing the addition. I've lived here for over 30 years and um, we realized that they want to put in a two-story addition um, and they, they, they have, uh, we, we, we do not, we object to the four variances. We just find that the lot size and the length um, is just too big. It would be very, um, it would encroach on our privacy and view. We have a very large garden in the back. It's the whole lot pretty much. And um, if, uh, the, if, the, if the house is gonna be half the coverage, that would block a lot of sunlight coming in for my mom's garden. My mother is a senior and she has spent many years cultivating this garden, especially when matters of our, our current climate as COVID, as you know, for the mental and physical health of seniors and everybody uh, around, it's really important to get out in the backyard. Um, this is also part of her connection to um, uh, a social life and things regard to, uh, regarding around the garden. Um, part of the reason why we bought this house so many years ago is, was for the backyard. So we do have privacy to entertain, to have fun, just well, if we, we feel if we're back there that it would probably encroach on our privacy. We feel people are looking over us. Um, we just find that it's just, I know uh, along our block is mostly bungles and two stories, but the extension, the length, plus the existing shared um, garage with number 52 and 54, they share an existing garage. There went, it would just block our view of the city and also the natural sunlight coming through. That would also affect similar neighbors on either side, number 52 and number 54. Um, I, I live with two seniors. So they like spending time back there. They don't really vacation, so that's the major part. Um, also, to address the issues of um, just the integrity of the city planning, I know it has gone through changes and revitalization. I appreciate people trying to improve their property, but I just think it'd be too obtrusive to the neighbors around. I find my neighbor uh, at number 58 is a bungalow and we're a two-story and I find I'm intruding on them because of the height um, of our building. We're a two-story building, just almost as similar to the, the 
our neighbors trying to um, propose to erecting an addition. So I find we're very intrusive and we're two stories. So just another length would, 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 would affect um, would affect it, and also the neighbors I know they they at number uh, number 52 um, they have I don't know if it's a mutual driveway, but they have two par cars parked in the front. Um, if they were to they don't if they were to have another car come in to drive in the back, it'd be very hard from the back up because of the wall of the addition. They can't turn around to reverse; they'd have to reverse backwards. Okay, I There's just a, have a to sorry, I'll have to interrupt then, but. Yeah, that that is beyond my jurisdiction. I'm only looking at the okay. variances, uh, turning movements, and all those things are not um, our purview. So I would rather have okay. you focus, and you have uh, almost 45 seconds left. So I would rather have you focus on the variances. Okay. Um. Is there anything else? I don't know what to add. Maybe my neighbors can add to more because I, I, I'm kind of I'm not able to add right now. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate that. So um, we now move uh, members of the committee. Um, Brian, can I have the screen back, please? Thank you. Any any comments for Patricia or Sally? Questions? Okay, see none. All right, we now go to um, our first, I think we, we spoke with Paul, right? Okay, we're going to go to Elizabeth Diane. Elizabeth? Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. Oh. You have five minutes. Please tell us what your concerns are with the application. Okay, first I want to say that I never received any uh, correspondence in the mail um, before this one, March the 1st one. I didn't receive anything. Okay, the points of interest, um, the, the variances. Uh, number one, the lot coverage exceeds what is allowed. I'm not gonna read it all. The two, the building length permitted is 17 meters, and it was approved for 18.74 meters, but it's still uh, proposed uh, building length is more, that is like 19.96 meters, which is almost 20 meters. Uh, number three, the maximum required length is 19 meters from the front to the rear, and the proposed, again, is 20.2, again, more. That's a um, this is not a desirable use of this land, um, and I hope it doesn't imply that other structures, such as this one, can start appearing on our uh, green spaces, like they're just making it uh, like a big box on the back. In this, this was for family use. Where do all the children play? They're using all their backyard or gather with friends outside. I believe the future use of this property is going to be for rental purposes. With a shared drive, I'm not sure if it's a shared drive or what it is, but it's very narrow. I don't, and again, you already mentioned you can't um, comment on how they're going to move around. It would be pretty tricky and unsafe. Uh, the property is a brick home um, with uh, they're going to put the added wooden two-story structure on the back. Um, I think that's going to be like an eyesore. I don't think anybody would like to have that looking at them. The neighboring property values could, could and prob probably will diminish greatly since the other uh, people are going to be um, uh, not able to have, um, you know, light and um, air and invade privacy. And also without green space, um, I heard from other people, um, I don't, you know, using this property, I don't know where the rain is going to go or the snow could be more um, flooding. Um, I think the future of this structure is for uh, rental and could cause uh, chaos, especially when it comes to parking, because we're right on Pharmacy Avenue, as you know. Uh, the home already has uh, no green space in the front. Just a couple of parking like pads, legal or illegal, I don't know, for two cars. So thank you. Those are my comments. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth, for your time. Members of the committee, any questions for Elizabeth? Okay, thank you. Um, we have now Jenny Chen. Yes. Okay, uh, I want to mention that uh, last year that 
first proposal, nobody received a letter. So nobody knows they got approved it last year. Sorry, okay. did you did you receive the notice in the mail dated March 1st? No, no. For last year, I supposed to never receive any letter. Only this time I received this letter. Yeah, yeah. so this time. I'm talking Nobody. about this time here. This time you received this a letter. Time, of course, I received it. I receive it. That's why I'm I'm here. If I don't receive, I don't even know. I have a meeting, a hearing today. Exactly. So I cannot speak to what happened in the past. I can speak to certainly what's happening today. So uh, you have nobody the notice. It. Anyway, when I ask everybody, nobody receive it on our street. Like fifty, I'm fifty two. No, not receive it. Fifty six, never receive it. Yeah, fifty eight or sixty. Nobody receive it. I don't know why. This time or previously. Seriously, not this time. This time we are here. We all, always have, we must have received this letter before. So I this is, this so, hearing, right? so this is what I'm trying to say. What happened previously, I cannot speak to that. Uh, that is not what we're discussing today. We're discussing what we have in front of us today. The residents have received a notice and you are here because of that notice. So we can focus on what we have before no. us today. No, I'm against those four variants. They want the maximum for uh, longer, right, and bigger. Right now, our, uh, you know, the neutral lane is very narrow already. And they have a basement in the middle of the lane. They have an entrance to the basement. They've got tenants smoking there. It's really hard to go for one car go in, drive into the garage there. If they make additional there, it makes the neutral drive lane smaller because they're putting a wall there. You can't really turn the car around or reverse the car. You have to back in and out. When we back out, the car is very dangerous because there's a box stop between the 54 and 56. Box stop right there. And they already have two cars parking in the front there. It's very hard to see the children walking by or cross to our, uh, walking on a sideway, right? So you could only, with that narrow lane, you could only back out. When you back out, it's really, really hard and very dangerous for the children, not safe. That's why I think, you know, they, they're doing uh, the maximum of 19, they put in 20 meter more and before on uh, number two variant, it was 17. Now they want 1996, almost 20 meters. They want too much. Okay. We hear you. You have your, you have concerns with the building length and well, all the variances. After the additional, after the addition two storage, they might have more tenants because right now they already ran out the whole basement. They always have two guys smoking there and throw out all the cigarette butts there on the laneway, okay? If it's possible, if they rent more uh, 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 rooms over there, there's more cars, maybe more cars possible over there. It's very hard for the car to reverse or to move. Okay. All right, Jenny, I can't speak to rents or cars. Um, I can only speak to the variances that are before us today. Uh, renting a property or cars on the property are not um, part of this application. So if that problem ever arises in the future, I would suggest that you contact the city depart city and, and speak to the right department and, and you can express your concerns and complain, but I, I really cannot help you with that particular concern today. Okay, uh, anything else? And, and, uh, and um, the you know, when they have two storage, we won't have the privacy there on the backyard. Okay. Okay. You have uh, 20 seconds left. Uh, 20 seconds left. Do you want to uh, do your closing remarks? Uh, I don't understand that one. Uh, number two. <laughs> okay. Uh, they only allow for 70 meter, right? The mag and now they're asking for 1996. That is correct. So the, the zoning bylaw permits a maximum building length of 17 meters. They're asking for 19.96.
Yeah, I'm against that. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you for your time, uh, Jenny. Uh, we've heard your concerns. We okay. will uh, request uh, Patrick to address. But before I do that, can I have the screen back, please? Members of the committee, uh, do you have any questions for Jenny at this time? Okay, I see none. All right. So I'm going to move to Patrick. Patrick? Yes. So, sir, you heard the concerns that were raised by the uh, neighbors. How would you like to respond? Um, just a reminder that the two-story section of the house is totally within the 17-meter uh, requirement. Se yeah, 17-meter requirement. And we're only basically talking about the one-story section of the back. And the owner just decided at the last minute that he'd like to have it just a little bit deeper than what was originally approved by the committee. That's all I have basically have to say. Okay, Member M, please go ahead. Hi there, uh, sir. I do have some questions for you. I understand the desired change, but looking at your new drawings, you can't help but see that you're like, you know, you already were through your previous uh, application, which I recall, I just went and pulled up my notes from the meeting last time. And I remember saying, okay, well, you know, I, I don't mind the addition that you guys were proposing, but this additional four feet, it does have an impact. I mean, like, look how you, how little left you have space between the actual new addition to the garage and everything. And you can't help but think when you're looking at all of these additions put together, that it's a little bit of an overdevelopment of the lot. And, you know, we already approved a variance last year, this time, to give you some relief to expand on the house that we felt was appropriate. And I feel like going beyond what was already sought and approved of last year is a little bit egregious in terms of, you know, it, it does have an impact. I do see an impact. I mean, it, it's all, almost the entire backyard is going to be taken up by some sort of structure. There's only a very sliver, little bit of soft landscaping left. And personally, my opinion, it is it's it, this new request for this additional four feet just pushes you above the envelope of, of being kind of uh, minor in nature, um, in my opinion. Okay, thank you. Uh, Patrick? Um, all I can say is that uh, when the uh, wife saw the plan and how everything was going to work out, she just thought that she wanted to have things a little bigger. And uh, they decided that uh, they wanted to make another try to get just a bit more space inside their house. I appreciate that, but it should not necessarily be at the expense of the greater good surrounding. So. I mean, I, I do appreciate the desire, but I personally, and I can't speak for my fellow committee members, but I mean, I was I was supportive of the last variance. I thought that that was the most that I could consider at that time as being minor. Um, this on top of that to me is unfortunately just a bit of an overbuild of the development of the lot in my eyes. Okay, thank you. Um, before I proceed to other members, just um, bear with me, Member McCauley. Patrick, uh, have you, do, do you think you've addressed all the concerns that were raised by the neighbors, or would you still need some yes. time? Uh, yes, I, I, as far as uh, gardening in the backyard next door, I don't think that a, that a four-foot extension to a one-story addition would affect that. As far as privacy goes, there's going to be a privacy fence on the deck. As far as the distance between the addition and the garage, uh, I have pointed this out to them, and they are happy with that, uh, with the distance between the two. Uh, and they would rather have space inside the house than outside of the house. Okay. All right. Anything else? No, that's about it. Okay. Thank you. Member McCauley, you had your hand raised. Please go ahead. Yes. Um, I understand people want space inside the house. Um, that it seems desirable. However, it's the space outside the house that really impacts the neighbors. And I'm looking at your plans here and I'm really questioning whether these numbers are accurate. You have a coverage of 49% for 
and then you say in this on your, the plan that you provided that uh, you're providing 55% of the lot in landscaping. It doesn't add up. Um, I'm looking at this and I'm agreeing with, with Amy, regardless of whether these numbers add up or not, I think you're pushing this envelope a little bit too much. Okay, thank you for that comment. Any any other comment, Member Saeed? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I have a different opinion in this case. Um, yeah, uh, previously the committee approved the variances. Uh, a lot of relaxations were given. Uh, but I mean, even if the applicant is coming back to the committee of adjustment with these variances, which are in front of us, I still believe that all the variances, so one, two, three, four, they are, uh, they are minor, and um, they they could be supported. Thank you, Member M. I, I respect your your position, Mohanad. I know you are more sensitive to people wanting to have freedoms to do things on their own property that help sort of cater to their needs. But I, I, I truly do feel that this addition beyond like on this on the plan where it's bubbled. I mean, if you look at dwelling 56 right next door, that's more than double the depth. So these poor people are looking out their back window and all of they're gonna see is this great, great big long brick building. You know, all the other houses don't nearly extend as far. And we already gave them permission to go well beyond uh, what the minimum is. And now we're saying we're gonna give them more to even encroach on, on these people's poor views of a, like, it's gonna feel like they're in a tunnel, you know, because they're gonna look out their window and they're just gonna see brick walls for like double the length of their property. So while I appreciate that this existing homeowner wants more space, space for her, she has to be at least sympathetic to how her needs are impacting others around her. And I, I, I if this was, you know, like if, if this was before us last year, I wouldn't have supported it. I supported what I felt was at, at the time appropriate in terms of an addition to the length and the depth of this house. And I feel that the additional request of the four feet is just pushing the envelope as as uh, Member Macaulay said, just a little too far that it's it's quite impactful, especially to the house at number 56. Okay, great, thank you. Um... Beyond just the brick wall, like, I mean, if there's even windows, their windows are gonna look directly into that person's backyard. I mean, it's it's really not, not a great position. I'm sorry. Okay, all right. Um, we have to now move, so. Patrick, before I take the matter into committee, any closing remarks? No, that's, that's the way it is. They just want to have an extra four feet. They'd rather have it inside than outside. Okay, thank you very the much. The distance between the house and the garage is is what it is. Uh, whether or not it be uh, what it is now or another four feet, it's basically space that can't really be used by much anyway. So they would rather have the space inside the house. So I Thank just you. want to clarify my, my point about the distance between the garage and the addition is really secondary to my main point, which is that there is a lot of build form that's extending beyond the existing rear walls of your flanking immediate neighbors. And because of that, there are, in my opinion, is privacy impacts that have nothing to do with the distance between the garage and the addition. I just wanted to make that clear that that is my main concern. Okay, thank you. I think we've had a good deliberation on this one. I would like to take the matter into committee now. So committee members, I'm in your hands now. Any comments or would you like to, are you prepared for a motion? I'm prepared for a motion. Um, I, I don't know if everybody else is okay with that. Okay, I see Anne nodding. Okay, uh, member, okay member McKay, okay. you can very quiet today. Any comment? <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot though, but. Just want to ask. Okay. Sorry, Madam Chair. Uh, no, uh, my uh, my impression and uh, my feeling about this is is matches the member uh, M's. I think there is an impact here, and I I couldn't support the variances. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Having said that, Member M, please proceed with the motion. Yes. Thank you. And I do note that there are no um, conditions. 
so with that, I would like to um, move a motion for a, a denial of item 16 at 54 Pharmacy Avenue. In my opinion, I do not feel that these variances are minor in nature, and I do not feel they need the four tests. And um, yes, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. May I have a seconder, please? Member McCauley, please go ahead. I will second that motion. All right, all in favor of this motion. All right, all opposed? Members say the poses the motion. The motion is carried. The application is denied. Thank you, Patrick, for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. So the second last item on the agenda that was held, <clears throat> it is item number six, 19. And item number 19 is 20 Nobert Road. 20 Nobert Road. And this is an application to construct a new two-story detached dwelling, and we have before us one variance. And the reason it was held was because we have a, own, uh, a neighbor who wishes to speak. So I'll do a roll call. Brad, Lou, are you with us, Brad? Yeah. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Just, just stay with us for a moment. Rajesh Nayar yeah. is the owner. Are you with us, Rajesh? Uh, yes, I am here. Okay, thank you. We're just doing a roll call right now. Uh, Christina Dairo, the neighbor. Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you, Christina. So just bear with us for a moment. Um, Brad or Rajesh, would you like to do a presentation or would you rather dive into the questions? Yes, I will do the short uh, presentation. Okay, so you have five minutes to present. Please go ahead. Okay, my name is Brad. I'm the agent and the designer of the house at the 20 Robert Road. Uh, actually, actually, we have a simple one. We only have one minor variance. with a lot of meat, the scabble rolling by low the house height. Um, is a line meter. Our one's a Proposed 10 meter is uh, actually is meet the new rolling bylaw uh, 269 2013. Uh, at, actually, at the beginning, the owner before buy the house, uh, they check with the city, they confirm that's 10 meter. So, because that's some basically that's some for design, everything. So, finally, get this uh, rolling notice about the scarborough rolling bylaw. So we discuss with the owner and also consider of the total uh, design, like height, elevation, floor height, and uh, basement window. So we think the, maybe we have to keep this one and uh, apply this uh, minor variance. Okay, uh, this one also looks like uh, it's reasonable because the new zone is uh, uh, allow the 10 meter height. Uh, also look at the, our, we got the latest support if you look at this one, uh, our uh, support material, the letter of support uh, from map, you can see we got the seven support uh, from neighbors, especially the at the south and lost neighbors uh, is at the 18 and the 22, Robert Road. Yeah, and uh, also for, from this map, we can see that behind the uh, uh, this house, the west side of the house is a commercial building. Uh, yeah, this is uh, 25, uh, 55 uh, Victory Park uh, Avenue. Yeah, from the, our support uh, material match, sir, is our photo. You can see we have the uh, backyard uh, have the high wood the wood board uh, fence mm -hmm. is about twelve uh, feet uh, four inch high mm -hmm. and uh, you can see our photo. 
Yes, we have the photos. We received the package from you, so we have reviewed that material. Yeah. Yeah, so behind is, uh, is on the west side is the commercial building, is one story. And uh, just behind the uh, fence is the driveway, and uh, yeah, the driveway and below, you can see uh, another one. Go, 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 go to third numbers. Yeah, you can see the, this one is the driveway and the loading area. And you, you look at this uh, high fence, is, uh, this house is. Uh, if you go to, yeah, build that house is like you will not affect their view and also uh, like the sunlight. Yep. So this is my <laughs> presentation. Yeah, support uh, later, later is there. Yeah. Okay. No, thank so, you. Yeah, that's uh, all. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, I just want to check with the owner. Would you like to say something? Rajesh? I'm giving me a couple of minutes. Yes, if I can have a couple of minutes just yes. to uh, impress upon uh, the, uh, the panel. Uh, sure. So first of all, yes, uh, as Brad just indicated, that there is a supermarket actually at the back of our uh, right uh, at the back of our property. So uh, there's, there's this 12 foot high. Uh, fence and, and, and we're, we're just looking to get a little bit of visual relief from that. The, the building behind us, the supermarket, eventually uh, it leads to 11 meters. So we're we're looking to go 10 meters, which is still uh, below what that's permitted at. Uh, the other thing, which uh, again, Brad touched on it, but we, we followed all the rules right from the start. Uh, we, uh, you know, setbacks, flood coverage, everything, you name it. And we even, from our standpoint, we followed the uh, citywide uh, zoning bylaw 569-2013, uh, but we under which permits 10 meters. However, um, we've been advised that there's a technicality with regards to the uh, appeal of previous uh, bylaw. So, uh, I think in in light of that, we we would like to recommend that it. it it fits in with the intent of uh, the zoning for that area already. Um, and, and the fact is that that entire area is rapidly redeveloping uh, that pocket southeast of uh, the intersection of uh, Victoria Park and Shepherd. Uh, there, there's uh, condo towers going up. In fact, there's presently an application for another uh, uh, condo tower, which is to go up uh, probably about 100, 100, 150 feet uh, just southwest of Nover. Uh, so that's, I guess, uh, under consideration right now. So we'll, we'll be looking at a lot of, uh, you know, higher buildings around us. Uh, again, this whole area is getting redeveloped. So that is uh, all I just wanted to impress upon the committee that, uh, that I think in light of all that development and where we are at, that the request for uh, an extra one meter is is not very significant and in line with the intent of the area. Thank you. Okay, thank you, um, Rajesh, for that explanation. Members of the committee, any questions for Brad or Rajesh at this time? Okay, I see none. Thank you. We now move to Christina. Christina, are you with us? I'm here. All right, Christina, please go ahead. Uh, you have five minutes, and please let us know what your concerns are with the application. Okay, um, I do have a, a few concerns. While they do acknowledge that the variance that they're applying for is small and minimal, I would like to point out that this is uh, an old, old community. Um, the houses here, there are no other two-story houses on our street. While yes, there is development happening and houses are growing, um, this the street um, is a beautiful little street. It's a nice little pocket. Uh, we do have a lot of seniors living here. Um, and I don't believe that the variance is, is needed. I think uh, the lot is large enough and that there's substantial space to do what can be done to a home. I'm not saying that development shouldn't happen. I realize some of these homes are a little smaller, growing families, I acknowledge that. This house itself already is a very large house on a nice piece of property. The land behind it is owned by the Chinese um, 
a grocery store, but they were the ones that put up that fence. And that was the only way that they were allowed to stay in that space was be putting up that fence for soundproofing. Um, the other concern that I, I really have is that I was never asked to sign one of these documents. I was never approached and I live directly across, I live across the street from this home that's going to be built. And I do have concerns about um, a lot of things. And I'm, I'm wondering what proposal was made to these uh, neighbors as to, we just want to go up a little bit or whether they were shown the actual diagram that I received a copy of, which clearly shows two driveways. Okay, so if I may just interrupt you for a moment, Christina. I just wanted to remind you that the application that is before the committee is for one variance, and that is the height variance. The maximum permitted building height is nine meters. The proposed building height is 10 meters. Matters related to driveway or other issues, that's not uh, before us today, or that's not under the jurisdiction of the committee. So I would really um, recommend that you uh, provide us with your concerns as it relates to the variance related to the height. I cannot speak to any other items other than what's before me today. Okay, well, I understand and appreciate that. My concern is a lot of the neighbors that are in my neighborhood are senior members. And what I want to know is what was pitched to them? Was it just the height that they were going to go up? And then how do we address all these other issues that clearly this house is not going to be a single family resident? This house, the, and, and I also don't understand why we can't see the elevation part of the variance. We just get to see a site plan. There should be. I just think there's some misleading things, and I think there's going to be something coming in that there's going to be two families. This is no longer going to be a single family residence, which I have great concern over. And the only reason I say that is because of the two driveways and some of the other things in the document. So while I realize we're just dealing with the variance, the height variance, I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page and that, that they're not just going with the variance and going to sneak in these other things after the fact. Member M, please go ahead. Hi, maybe if Brian could bring up the front elevation. So yeah, you can see that there is two garages, but there's only one entrance. So I think it maybe this family has a lot of stuff they need to store or maybe a lot of vehicles, but it, this to me doesn't look like multiple residences just because it, so these elevations should have been included in, in the notice package because they were included in our notice package. So um, I, I just wanted to clarify, there is no two separate entrances. Um, I just wanted to make sure Brian pulled up this elevation. So thank you, Member M for that. So the elevation drawing is up. And I just want to confirm, Christina, did you receive a copy of this drawing in your notice package? No, in fact, I didn't receive a notice at all. I received a copy of this. Somebody had mentioned it to me, my neighbors, and I sourced out this myself. And I wasn't approached to sign, which really upsets me because I'd really like to know what was proposed to the other neighbors because some of the neighbors, I don't know if they fully understand what they were signing. Okay, so I can't speak to the signature or what was being signed. That's that's not the, that's beyond the purview of this committee. We can always, we will certainly ask Brad and Rajesh to get the clarification on. So um, before I leave, um, any anything else to add? Um, no, I mean, I think that's just, you know, definitely my concern is, you know, why, mm -hmm not receiving this document that's up on the screen now um, okay. is if there isn't a second entrance, that's definitely, you know, it changes my, my thoughts a little bit, although I still disagree. I don't approve of it going up the extra meter. I don't think it needs it. That'll put it at way too high and there are no other homes in this area. And there have been some renovations done on some okay. homes that have improved the neighborhood, which I have no problem with. It's great, but I don't think we need anything of this size. Okay. It definitely changes the neighborhood. All right. Thank you for that comment, uh, for your concerns, Christina. We will um, request a response from the owner and the agent about um, the concerns that you've raised. 
uh, while I'm going to get some clarification from staff as well. But, but until that, uh, let's turn over to Brad. Brad, are you with us? Or Ajesh, would you like to? Yes, I'm with you. Yes. Okay. So you heard the concerns from Christina. Um, how would you like to respond? Okay, for this uh, height, uh, actually, this design is really uh, standard, and uh, that's how the area is low change. If it's ch even change the line meter, is the size there. Also, driveway is two driveway, and also uh, Amy mentioned of uh, elevation. Actually, we have a uh, two driveway. If you look at the uh, side plan, yeah, there is a uh, two driveway. Yeah, and uh, also that's. Uh, for the view for crossover, that's uh, that's elevation. I think that's design will not affect the crossover the street. And when I go to uh, ask the labor support, actually we prepare full full uh, that plan, include elevation plan and the side plan to show the laborers. Uh, but I don't know for this owner I have to check right right to show to them or not. Yeah. But I prepare all drawing and ask them to go to check every uh, labors, uh, include less elevation and the plans, all plans. Yeah. And it was the same drawing that you had shared with the. Yes, yeah, same drawing, same drawing. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, there was concern about the the height. How would you like to respond to that? Uh, I say that this height is standard. If uh, is this height also uh, crossover is. Uh, don't have any like uh, sunshine shade or anything because uh, I think the uh, her, her house is a crossover at the east side of the, the street and uh, also is not directly uh, from. I'm not so sure why they affect uh, her. <laughs> yeah. Like the new zoning also shows show that's 10 meters is zero, but I guess that uh, should be a change to the new zoning. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just want, um, I got clarification from staff. The notice was sent out to the to the neighbors within the 60 meter radius and um, Christina's uh, address is on the list that the notice was mailed out. Um, I did check with staff if what drawings were attached to the notice that was mailed out and they confirmed that there was a copy of the, the notice, the location map and a site plan. But on the notice, there's a link provided, um, the AIC link provided, that takes you to all the drawings that are part of this package. So in staff's opinion, and in my opinion too, I think the um, notification requirements for this application were met by the, um, in accordance with the Planning Act. So I'm going to leave it at that. So there's no issues with the notice itself or, or the circulation of the notice itself. Um, any closing remarks? Sorry, before I do that, members of the committee, any questions for Brad? Okay, there are no questions. Now I will uh, check with the uh, last call with Brad. Brad, we're going to take the matter into committee. Any closing remarks before I do that? No, thank you. No. Okay, all right, thank you very much. So members of the committee, the matter is now into committee. Um, we have received the clarification from staff. We have heard the neighbor, member M, any comment? Yeah, I just wanna acknowledge that um, I think that the, the, the citywide bylaw currently permits this height of 10 meters and it's the old bylaw that does not allow for it is my understanding. Um, and so, if that bylaw was repealed, but it's not, you know, this wouldn't even be a variance before us. Um, uh, another thing I wanted to note is that I guess the the setbacks are all met, and generally when height is like if you're going to go up in height, you want to make sure that you you have enough distance right from everything around you. And I mean the height increase, I guess, is in my opinion, is kind of marginal because through the citywide bylaw, it's permitted out of right. And he, they meet all of the other setbacks um, adjacent to to the properties in in the front yard to across the street and, and that. So um, while I'm sympathetic to to um, I, I can't recall her name to the 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 fact that this is a much different looking building um, than than the what's existing on on the street. Um, they're fairly consistent with what is required from from the bylaw. That is the current bylaw. So, um, 
that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you, Member M. Any other comment? Okay, I see none. All right, oh, Member McKay? Oh, Gary had his hand up. Yep, I just saw. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Madam Chair. No, I'm just, uh, my notes, I'm indicating that there's uh, urban forestry conditions. So should should there be a motion for approval, we'd want to attach that condition. That is a very good observation. Thank you for that. I will just confirm with Brad. Uh, and Brad, are you aware of those conditions yes. of urban forestry? Okay. I heard that. So that has been confirmed. Brad has a copy of those conditions. Uh, motion, please. Member M. Um, I put forward a motion of approval subject to the urban forestry conditions for item number 19, 20 Norbert Road, please. Thank you. May I have a uh, seconder? Member McKay, please go ahead. Yes, Madam Chair, I'm pleased to second and uh, approve that uh, motion for approval, subject, subject to the urban forest conditions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor of this motion? The motion is carried. The application is approved subject to conditions of urban forestry. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, we now move to our last item on the agenda for today. Item number 22, and that is 1050 Military Trail. This was held this morning because we were, uh, we had two um, residents who had registered to speak and they were not logged in. So this is an application. Um, this is for the U of T Scarborough campus to obtain a temporary reduction in the number of required parking spaces. We have a community planning staff report um, I will do a roll call again. So, Melissa? Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for your patience and staying with us. Michael Gilano Nardo? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, present. Thank you. Mark Jamieson? Oh, okay. Mark's not there. Okay, no problem. Brent, are you with us, Brent? I am. Thank you. And doing a roll call for Jeffrey Cruz. <laughs> Jeffrey has not signed in. And then we have Nadahimana has not joined in. So to Jeffrey and Nadahima, we, um, gave, we, we waited for you. We did a roll call, gave you an opportunity to sign in, but you did not sign in. So we are going to move forward with this application. So, uh, so Melissa, uh, who will be the speaker on your behalf? Melissa, Michael, or Mark? Yes, I will be speaking, and Brent and Michael are present in case there's any questions, but they don't intend to present today. Perfect. Thank you very much. So, uh, would you like to present or do a brief presentation, or would, would you rather um, entertain the questions from the committee? I think a brief presentation would be the appropriate just to give some context to sure. the application. Sure, you have five minutes. Please Thank go you. ahead. Thank you. So the university seeks relief from the minimum parking requirements of the Highland Creek zoning bylaw for its Scarborough campus. The variant seeks permission for a five-year temporary reduction in the number of required spaces for parking for the Scarborough campus to facilitate the construction of the proposed instructional center, otherwise known as IC2, an Indigenous house, until the completion of a proposed permanent parking garage. These projects are being advanced in accordance with the university's campus master plan and draft secondary plan. And I am also pleased to note that the development application for the parking garage was submitted to the city last week. If we look at the aerial photo, this helps to provide some context. And what you'll see here is in red, we see the proposed sites for IC2 Indigenous House and the parking garage, and those are all north of Ellesmere. And we also see in purple, that's a student residence that is newly approved and under construction. Now, in my view, and as supported by transportation and planning staff and BA, this variance certainly meets the test as for minor variance under Section 45 of the Planning Act. Firstly, it's appropriate for the development of the university's campus. These developments represent an important part of the university's long-term vision for the campus. 
allowing for efficient growth and development of the university to meet growing demands and strengthening the president presence of the university market development. When I see two and indigenous house are advanced for construction, the current campus wide parking supply will be reduced because if we look back at our aerial image, each of these development sites are located in an existing surface parking lot. But this reduction will be temporary until the completion of the proposed parking garage. And it's important to note that once the parking garage is completed, not only will the university meet the requirements of the zoning bylaw, but there will be a surplus of over 400 parking spaces. And there won't be any undesirable impact to the campus or the surrounding land. Secondly, this variance meets the purpose of the city's official plan. The campus is designated institutional and it's also located in the Highland Creek Secondary Plan, Secondary Plan, the proposed facilities, the proposed development, meeting the intent of the institutional area policy of the official plan that permits university uses. And it also the intent of the proposed Scarborough campus secondary plan because it's consistent with the structure and street network plans for the campus area and is also consistent with the proposed parking policies that importantly promote the use of structures or underground parking and limit surface parking. Thirdly, the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw is certainly maintained because this is a temporary variance. It really is technical in nature only, and it's only needed to facilitate construction and the advancement of these very important projects. And again, there is no permanent reduction in overall parking. And fourthly, the variance requested is minor. It will not create again any undesirable impact to transportation, the campus, or the surrounding area. And it's also appropriate because there's lots of alternative transportation on the campus and to the campus, TTC, GO, cycling, infrastructure, trails. And we also have seen a general shift towards remote learning given the pandemic. And certainly there is an abundance, even an oversupply of parking that exists on the campus today. Again, I would just say that planning staff and transportation services have no objection. And accordingly, I would ask the committee to approve the requested variance before it. Okay, thank you, Melissa, uh, for oh, that yeah. presentation. Um, just want to double check with you. So you've reviewed the staff report from community planning and you have no concerns with the recommended con condition should the committee approve the application today? That's correct. Okay, thank you very much. So stay with us for a moment. Member McCauley. Yes, thank you. Can't hear you, Member Macaulay. We can't not hear you. Are you on mute? Hi, hi Anne. Can you unmute yourself? I have unmuted myself. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Thank you. I love these buttons. A um, couple of points of clarification. The uh, application for the parking garage, I understand from the applicant, has been uh, recently submitted to uh, the municipality. Will that parking garage need any further variances? Is that a question? Can for I Mel ask the applicant? Sure, Melissa? Yes, no, it, it won't need any further variances. The, the parking okay, structure itself is providing an oversupply. Okay, I, all right. Uh, the second question I have is the um, transportation planning or transportation services is recommending that the variance be limited to three years from the date of issuance of the letter of final and binding. You have mentioned five years. Are you uh, are you asking for th for five years? She's asking for five in accordance with the community planning staff so, report. But the if uh, I may, there was a, if I may to assist the committee, there was a revised transportation recommendation that came forward for five years as well. 
That is correct. So, Member McCauley, we do have that on uh, the agenda. There are two transportation services memos, one from February 12 and the other from February 22nd. And if you look at that, uh, it is recommending five years. Five years, yes. Oh, okay. Thank you for that clarification because I've just the, looked at the earlier one that says three years. Okay. And then we have the that's community the, plan. Yeah, that's the extent of all my questions. Thank you. Member Saeed. Thank you, Madam Chair. In continuation to this discussion of uh, limiting this approval for a period of five years, I, I understand both the community planning and transportation section. Uh, they are having the uh, recommendation for limiting this variance for a period of five years. Melissa, my question to you, uh, you mentioned in your presentation that very recently that the garage construction application has been submitted to the consent authority. So do you have uh, any any time frame for that? Because we are limiting this for a certain period, so I cannot decide unless I have a clear, do you have any, any time frame like when is the start date or finish date of the garage construction project? So we can tie this with these recommendations. Yes, so I, I think the bigger question is the construction of the IC2 building and Indigenous Health. And those, I, and I'm also pleased to say for IC2, the zoning bylaw amendment was approved by council this week. We're just waiting upon final site plan approval. Construction is anticipated to start this, you know, as soon as possible. We're anticipating no later than this coming spring. Similarly, very similar timing for the proposed Indigenous House, which is also awaiting final site plan approval, and we're working very cooperatively with city staff on that. In terms of the parking structure, we don't anticipate a long approval period for this. And once it is approved, construction is not anticipated to take very long. As compared to our IC2 and our larger buildings, the parking garage will be you know, less timely to construct. So we have no concerns. It will certainly be completed uh, within that five-year period, perhaps earlier. It's hard to say just, just there could be some delay pending COVID, but certainly five years is appropriate and uh, and doable from the university's perspective as, as well as city staff. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On that note, Mr. McKay. So, Melissa, do you think that there'll be in-person uh, classes by September? What's your view on that? <laughs> I don't know if I'm the right one to answer that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, we have hope, right, with, with all the vaccines coming. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Okay, thank you. Um, on that note, uh, any close member Macaulay? If there are no other questions from the committee, I'm prepared to recommend approval of this variance for a temporary period of five years. Okay, we have a motion on the floor of recommending approval uh, for five years. Seconder, member M, please go ahead. I second that motion, Madam Chair. Thank you. All in favor of this motion? The motion is carried. Thank you very much. The application is approved. And we have Colin. With a call. Just, just, just through the chair, just for further clarification, um, approval subject to the, um, it's the same thing, but I just want to make sure, um, subject to the community planning conditions? Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair Which enough. basically saying no more right. than five years. Fair enough. All right. Thank you. We're good on that. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. That brings us Thank to you. the end of the items on the agenda. Um, Colin, uh, oh, sorry, staff had pro provided us with an update on the T-Lab decision and order for committee, uh, for committee's information. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. There is no so, other. Um, uh, Madam Chair, just, just uh, sorry, just for, uh, one thing, uh, really uh, the next meeting, March 31st. So as I understand uh, Colin's earlier uh, email, We'll have the panel meeting starting at 9 a.m. next time, and then the hearing starting at 10 o'clock. Is that right? Through the chair, that's correct. That is correct. Okay. And 
I'm just looking at the agenda. There was another update on Nine Dale Avenue, T Lab, that it was withdrawn by the neighbor. Okay, so that is only for information. So the date of next meeting, March 31st, we just got confirmation on the start time. And we need a motion to adjourn the meeting. Member McKay puts a motion to adjourn. As usual and happily, um, <laughs> I move that we adjourn this meeting. Seconder? Everyone? <laughs> okay, all right. Me meeting is adjourned. See you guys next uh, end of this month again. Take care. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye. Everybody, time habits. Bye-bye. Okay, I will... Uh...